Sing the song with me this morning. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. By faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay. Where doubts arise and fears dismay, though some may dwell where these abound, my prayer, my aim is higher ground. So I want to live above the world, though Satan's darts at me are hurled. For faith has caught the joyful sound, the song of saints on higher ground. I want to scale the utmost high and catch a gleam of glory bright. But still I'll pray till heaven I've found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. By faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. For those who have just joined in. Do that course with me at your house or wherever you might be at again. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Well, good morning from Sardis Lake Baptist Church. I'm still bringing to you the greatest news yet. And that is that Jesus is still on his throne, still saving old sinners, restoring the saints, and keeping the saints in his hand. And one of these days, he's going to take us home uh, to be with him. And so uh, anyway, I want to give you a quick announcement. On May 10th, that's on Mother's Day, we'll be opening up the doors for a for a services that morning. Now the services will not be at uh, their regular time that we've been used to have them at. They will start at for no, right now at 10 o'clock in the morning. 10 o'clock, just like we're doing the services now. But we'll have our first Sunday morning service on May 10th on Mother's Day. Uh, on Mother's Day, honoring our mothers on that day. And so you come in. We'll be practicing uh, uh, um, uh, just uh, the kind of distancing that makes everybody comfortable. We'll have things in place. And so we're going to have a great day of worship is what we're going to have. So be here. Be here. Let's pack the place out. Let's come in and rejoice in the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, be an example of faith. Now, I do know some cannot come. We will have live services for those that are not comfortable to come. Don't worry about that. We will still keep our live services up for that. And then, uh, and hopefully that be a blessing to you. We'll do that for a while until there's some more normalcy about things and people are safer to travel about and to get about, especially those with health issues. I want to go to the Gospel of Mark. The Gospel of Mark this morning. I want to read the God in the Gospel of Mark over here in chapter number one, and I want to read there in verse number thirty-five. The Lord's praise. And uh, he is preaching there in Galilee. He's been doing a great work. He's been cast, demons were casted out. Many had been healed. The work carries on. And so this is it. I, I want to speak to you this morning just for a time of devotion. Uh, it's not a Bible study, but a time of devotion uh, uh, this morning. And speaking about uh, get up, get up. My dad used to come into the room, never will forget when we were kids, and uh, he'd come in the room for school early in the morning and come through the house, and he'd holler out, rise and shine, rise and shine, rise and shine, everybody get up, and holler it out in our bedrooms, and open the doors, and turn on the lights, and we're sleeping, it's time to get up, 
And so there was no choice about it, but I remember hearing those words all the time, rise and shine. I say this, dear friend, I hope this virus has not taught you to be taught you to be lazy. I hope it's taught you that it's a time now to rise and shine. Every day is a brand new day, and, uh, and we need to be thankful for every day and come back to a place at a time of the worship of with God's people and that we would get up, amen, get up and be counted for the Lord's work, that we would get up and be counted as faithful in the Lord's eyes, that we would just be a servant unto him, and that you've got to get up. You can't do that laying down, amen? And uh, metaphorically, you've got to be able to get up and take a part. Verse number 35 of chapter number 1 of the Gospel of Mark, that perfect servant, he says here, that workman, he says, And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. And he said unto them, Let us go into the next towns, that I may preach there also. For therefore came I forth. And he preached in the synagogues throughout all Galilee and cast out devils. Amen and amen for that. And so he cast out devils. I love this little portion of scripture. So I thought about this this morning is that we too need to get up. We need to rise and shine in this day and time. Maybe you've been a little heavy, a little discouraged. Maybe you've been struggling with something today. I want you to know that the best way to overcome doubt and fear and struggles and hardships in our lives, dear friend, is to get up in the morning and spend your day, first part of your day, with the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to spend the first part of our day with the Lord Jesus Christ. While you're as fresh as you can be, get up a little early before you go to work. Get up in the morning and have a little talk with Jesus. It makes things right. Amen? Get up in the morning. Spend a little time with the Lord Jesus Christ. Ask him about some things. Ask him for some things. But get up in the morning. I don't know if it's 4 o'clock in the morning for you. I don't know if it's 6 o'clock or 8 o'clock in the morning for you or whatever it might be. The point is when you get up, get up in the morning and start with the Lord. All through the Word of God. There's places all through here where uh, the men of God started their day uh, in the morning with the Lord Jesus Christ, whatever time that might be for you. And so I want to reflect upon that on this subject of getting up and spending our time. Get up in the name of the Lord. There's several lessons that in the context of our text uh, that I want to bring out. First of all, I want you to think about in this context here, the text uh, that Jesus did not come to live in a solitary place. He come to be about the people. He says, but to be where people were. In Mark 1, 38, therefore came I forth. In other words, he didn't live in a solitary life. Uh, it, it's, it's not the goal of a Christian life that we live in a solitary life, but that we go about this world telling folks about who the Lord Jesus is. I'm going to tell you, I also noticed in the context of this text is that the Bible says there in verse 35 that Jesus went out. That is to say that he did not try to make his meeting with the, with the Father while still lying flat in his bed. But he had to get up, he had to stand up, and he had to go out. Amen? You know what we need this day and time? We need some stand-up Christians. Amen? We need some folks that will get up and be counted for the Lord Jesus Christ. Will you be counted today for the Lord? You want to get over some obstacles in your life? One way you got to do it, you can't stop getting up. You got to get up every morning and start it with the Lord. I also noticed in the context of this text is that to me it, it was that uh, it was in a solitary place. That really meant to me that God requires you and I, sometimes just as he did, to seek a solitary place. A place sometime also in the morning before the day gets busy and before we go out amongst the people is that we would spend some time with the Lord just personally between us and him. Now I want to say something to you. 
before I run off the end of the message here and just share a few thoughts and give you some reasons why we ought to get up in the morning and start out with Jesus. I want to give you some reasons why, but before I do, I want you to remember this if you don't remember anything else. I want you to remember this. It's very important. And that is that Jesus, early meeting with the Lord, with the Lord in mind, shows us, dear friends, a real spiritual truth that I came across a long time ago. And it's this, dear friend. Is that yesterday's spiritual experiences. Every day for a Christian, there's experiences that we must have. God's designed for us to have. But every day, but yesterday's spiritual experiences, dear friend, no matter how good it's been, no matter how good it was yesterday, your experience in the Lord, it will never be a substitute for today's spiritual experiences. You must get up every day. You cannot live always off yesterday's blessings. You must know God's got something fresh. God's got something new for us. God's got something just for you that will help you and encourage you more than anything else. I thought about that manna. You know, that when the Lord was giving them that manna in the wilderness, you know, and as it was coming down, the Bible, did, the Lord said he did this every day. And he was feeding this honey-like wafer, this little lightweight wafer coming out of the sky. And as it was coming down, they would collect it. It was nutritious. It was everything that they needed to sustain them as they were in the wilderness and a snake-bitten land. And yet as they were there, this honey-like wafer that was coming to them, feeding them every day. But there was one condition. They could not save that for the next day. If they did, the words would canker it and overtake it. You couldn't save it for the next day. They had to get up every day, and they had to go out every day with their basket, and they had to collect their manna. They had to gather their manna for the food for that day. You know what that says to me? Dear friend, yesterday's blessings and life might have been a good day for you, but you've got to get up today and you've got to meet with the Lord and you've got to get your basket and collect up the spiritual lessons of that day as that day goes along. Let me give you some reasons real briefly, if I can, of why you need to get up and spend some time with the Lord before you go through your day. You need to get up and spend some time. You need to have an early meeting with God in your day before you get out there. It'll help you these days to help you get up. Why do we need to get up? Here's some things to motivate you to get up early every morning for the believer. First of all, I say number one is because there's a con uh, the concern for God's impending judgment upon the wicked and upon the lost ought to get the Christian up, want to get up early every day and meet with the Lord. Why? Because his judgment's coming for those that are without Christ. And we know people that do not know the Lord. Y'all want to get up and meet with the Lord every morning and ask God, Lord, continue to save people. Take me to somebody today that I can share Jesus with. Take me to somebody today that I can let them know how good you've been to me. Thought about Genesis chapter 19, verse number 27. And Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. And he looked towards Sodom. Remember that? The Bible says, and he beheld the smoke of the country as the smoke of a furnace. Abraham prayed every morning early for what wicked city of that wicked city of Sodom. And he prayed for Lot in his family. And he asked God that he would save some folks in there. And the Lord wanted to save some folks. But they would not turn to the Lord. He could not even find ten righteous or one righteous that would come to know the Lord Jesus as his Savior. And the Bible says, dear friend, but Abraham got up in the morning. It woke him up every morning that he would pray for the city of Sodom. That they would repent and would not be destroyed. And then that day came, he seen where the city was destroyed. But thank God he saved Lot out of it. Amen. God kept his word to old Lot. And as we get up in the morning, we ought to be praying and want to meet with God. It ought to wake us up sometimes in our sleep that we know people that are without Christ. I say, dear friend, another reason why you ought to want to get up in the morning is because the desire to obey God's will. That ought to get you up in the morning. Not just because of the impending judgment that's coming. I'm running out of time to lend the lost to Christ. And to pray for the lost, but we ought to want to get up every morning, early in the morning, spend time with the Lord because of our desire to obey the will of God. I thought about Genesis chapter 22 and over there in verse number 3. 
Think about Abraham. The Bible says he got up early in the morning and sat on his ass and put the wood up on it. And God challenged him with a word and said, You take your son, your only son, upon the mount, and you sacrifice your son there. Oh, what a challenge, what a, what a thought it was. And the Bible says Abraham rose up early in the morning. We must not kid ourselves today, dear child of God. Obeying God is not easy to do. It's very difficult to do in this world that we're living in when there's so much that's fighting us in this enemy territory. But we must understand and always understand that it's the best thing that we will ever do. Abraham's faith was to be tested to the match, to the limit here. And we're reminded of that story as they go up that hill with Isaac. Hey, listen to me. Would he obey God or would he not? At the end of the day, he obeyed God. Amen? It's a test for you every day. You ought to spend the first morning and the first part of your day before you leave that house saying, Lord God, I don't know what test is going to be out there for me today. But Lord, I need to spend some time with you. Give me the courage to face the test and to overcome it that I may pass. Uh, that dear test. There's a lot of pressures, dear friend, out there with the world, the flesh, and the devil coming against us. We need to spend our early mornings with the Lord Jesus Christ. I tell you, dear friend, if, if you want to meet God, you need to meet him early in the morning. You'll spend most of your time asking God to help you obey him. If you'll do that in the morning, God will help you as you obey him. But if you don't do that, you get back home late in the evening. You know what most of us feel like as believers? We'll spend most of our time asking God to forgive us what we didn't do in the day. Because we didn't start the day asking God to help us to obey Him in the beginning of the day. And I like the first part of the day. Amen? Lord, we need your help to obey you. We can't just do this on our own. We need your help. God, help us to obey you. I say number three that I thought about here, and that is there's the plan to fulfill God's mission for your life. That ought to get you up early in the morning. Amen? You ought to want to have a desire to fulfill God's purpose every day of your life. And to do that, you need to get up when you get up in the morning, and you need to spend some time with the Lord Jesus Christ. Over in Exodus chapter 8 and verse number 20, we're reminded the scripture says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. You know what, dear child of God? I found out over these years of being his child. You know what I've learned? The more dedicated I've got, you know what I've learned? No matter where I go, I'm going to have to deal with Pharaohs in life. You're going to have to deal with Pharaohs in life. I don't care where you go. There's Pharaohs and things that remind us of the Pharaohs all around us in our life, all of the time. Everybody that serves God's got to stand before Pharaoh sometime during their day. You know what that Pharaoh is, don't you? That Pharaoh is the, is the one that wants to help the Pharaoh of misunderstanding. Always feeling misunderstood. Oh, Pharaoh won't walk around. Oh, I'm just so misunderstood. No, Pharaoh wasn't misunderstood. God knew what that man's heart was about. The world does not understand our love for God. He, the world doesn't understand our love for this book, this Bible. The world doesn't understand our devotion to each other and our love, even to love our enemies. The world doesn't understand those things, dear friend. But i got to tell you, dear friend, Pharaoh's everywhere we look, dear friend. There's a payroll of unfair treatment and, pers and persecution. There's a payroll of resistance to do the will of God. There's a payroll of denial, denial, trying to say don't serve God all the way, just do it part time. There's the payroll of, of, of stinginess and selfishness, dear friend. Hey, there's always a payroll around us trying to tempt us. We need to spend our day with the Lord, dear friend, first thing in the morning because we need to have a plan to fulfill God's mission for our life. That will get us up and uh, help us to get up in the morning and ask God what God's plan for our life is on that day. Let me tell you one other thing, dear friend. I'll share the rest of it with you. You'll come back tomorrow morning. I'll tell you this last thought that would get us up in the morning and spend some time with Jesus ought to be the expectation of a day of victory ought to get you up. You know, you ought to get up every day not looking at the day that you're going to be defeated. You ever got up and somebody got up Said, my goodness, boy, I just dread today. We've all done that sometime or another. Oh, my goodness, I don't know what today's going to hold. I'm so tired, I can't make it, and we just can't go. We all do that in our human nature, but I want to tell you spiritually, dear friend, we all get up with the attitude and say, Lord, today's another opportunity for victory. Today's another opportunity. If I just started off with you, God, help me and lead me to having more victories over my temptations and my struggles and my problems. 
Joshua chapter 3, verse number 1. You know the story well about old Joshua. The Bible says Joshua rose up early in the morning and he came to Jordan before they passed over. You know what that Jordan was a picture of? It's a picture of spiritual sign of dying to self and entering into the full blessing of God for us. It's a place of, as we just sang that song, I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bound. Lord, lead me and plant my feet upon higher ground. God help us today to get on some higher ground. But you got to start it off with Jesus, friend. You understand? you got to start it off with Jesus. Now, let me say a quick word. We're going to get off. Dear friend, if you're listening to me today and you've not yet trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, I don't see how you get out of bed in the morning. It was difficult for me when I was lost, and I talk to people, and I see people that are lost and without God. I don't see how they make it out of bed tomorrow. I know Christians struggle, too. Christians struggle because they're out of the will of God. They don't understand how important it is to start their day with the Lord. But dear lost friend, if you don't know Christ as your Savior today, today you need to start it with Jesus. Give your life. Surrender your life. You can't do anything to get saved. You can't do anything to, uh, to earn this salvation. You must throw your hands up and surrender and say, Lord, I give up. I'm a sinner. I'm lost. I'm hopeless without you. But only you, dear Lord Jesus, can save me. I give my life to thee. Forgive me of all my transgressions. Forgive me of all my sin. Pay my debt of sin off like you did at Calvary's cross would be enough. Lord Jesus, I give my life to thee in Jesus' name. You know what? God will save you. He'll never turn your way. We love you today. I beg of you, if you don't know Christ, if you do accept Christ just now, call me, text me, send a message to me, let me know. I'll be glad to read it and see it, and I'll send you, and I'll be praying for you if you trust in Christ your Savior. Amen. Love you, dear child of God. May 10th, we'll be back home. See you tomorrow.